This clavichord is an instrument that I built um, well maybe 15 years ago and I was fortunate to be able to get the uh, plans from it from the Karl Marx Museum in Germany and it's a uh, it's a copy of the clavichord that Bach had his whole life uh, made by Silverman, the famous organ builder. And it has the same number of keys as the organ as well. Uh, the wood from this instrument came from uh, southwest Wisconsin, it's cherry, and the panels here are redwood. So, so when were the first clavichords made? Oh, Melanie, yeah, it's a good question. Um, about 850 years ago, so it's definitely older than uh, the harpsichord. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, there are many different sizes. The one that Mozart traveled around in, in the back of a coach was a travel clavichord. And uh, this one is a mid-sized instrument. So what was your inspiration to begin building these instruments? Well, what inspired me uh, was the music of Bach. And uh, my whole life I've been a piano technician. And so my whole world is a world of sound. and. I, I wondered what the music would actually sound like uh, if it were played on Bach's instrument and Bach's tuning because of the fact that this that's an A but it's a half step lower than what we're used to today and the tuning on the instrument is um, mean tone tuning which Bach loves so much which gives the, in this, two whole tone scales that are tuned mean to each other. So I know that the piano plucks, or the piano has a hammer that hits the string. The harpsichord plucks the string. How does this produce sound? Well, this instrument produces sound also from a, a hammer hitting the string, so to speak. This, uh, this is the clavichord action. And over here on the chair, is the more or less industrial grand piano today. That's how complicated it's got. So how do the mechanics differ between clavichord and piano? Oh, thank you, Ronnie. So the, the mechanics differ that with the piano, when you strike the key, the hammer locks up. It doesn't do this. Because it catches on that back check there. And, that, and at that point, the hammer raises up so it could repeat again in Franz Liszt took that action to its limits, whereas the, the clavichord, as you saw in the simple action, all of the strings are muted off, so there's no sound. But when you touch the middle tangents to the strings, then, and when you release, because the strings are all woven uh, tightly with, um, uh, cloth, the sound stops. The other thing is, is that the first bit of the sound is a little bit sharp. And as you release your finger, the pitch goes flatter. And so you're able to play with a vibrato. So it becomes a much more personal instrument than the clavichord, or than the harpsichord. The piano and the harpsichord 
Once you strike the string, you've let go. You have nothing to hold on to. The clavichord, you're holding the strings with the metal tangent, so uh, it's one of the probably the only instruments I can think of where actually two pieces of metal brass come together and make sound. So pianos have individual dampers, but I don't see any here. Can you can you tell us about that? Oh, yes. Uh, so this strip of felt that's in here dampens all, all of the strings. And, and, and so as you press the key, you'll see the, the felt move up and down. And, and as you release, you get this quick cutoff. Touching it like that produces a completely different sound than this. So there's many different articulations to produce the sound on a clavichord. So I was expecting a longer keyboard than this. Are there different sizes of clavichords? Well, yes, there are. Um, the uh, larger clavichords are mostly F to F, which would be for Mozart and some Beethoven. Uh, and this one is basically the organ keyboard. And so much of Mozart uh, and, of course, all of Bach's music is played, there's played on here. There are a few pieces that go beyond the compass of this keyboard. But much of the music he wrote was written for the, the clavichord, and specifically, uh, and the point would be the well-tempered clavier, which this is the clavier, and not the equal-tempered clavier. So what do you think the clavichord has to offer pianists? Well, pianists and organists, I think what it offers is an insight into the innermost mind of one of the greatest geniuses ever to live. Because all of the ornamentation in Bach's music has to do with the tuning. And first and foremost, I believe when we're playing the music of, of Bach, we should have reverence to the tuning that Bach used on his instrument. And of course, it would be like saying, well, what kind of coffee would Bach drink? Well, he probably drank whatever he had, but he used well temperament, he used uh, mean tone temperament. He wrote so much of his music for uh, like a modified mean tone and much of it for just a pure mean tone. But the move with people like Kernberger and Marker and some of his uh, colleagues was to write music in all of the keys, which uh, the Diego Aaron tuning wouldn't allow for that. And so Bach moved on at that point to write the monumental well-tempered clavier book one and two for well-temperment to show that even though it wasn't even tempered, it was tempered well enough so you could play in all of the keys. That was a revelatory moment for uh, music lovers that were exposed to this because they thought that they were hearing equal temperament because they never heard music in the key of B major or A flat or B flat or G flat. So compared to the, to the power of the grand piano, this instrument has a relatively soft voice. How do you, how do you manage? Well, that's a good question. Uh, the, um, the, uh, the, the harpsichord was an instrument that Bach mostly used when he played with other people. My own feeling is I doubt very much if in the evening Bach played his, his harpsichord unless somebody was coming over for a jam session. And so he played he played the clavichord, and um, the, uh, the clavichord really teaches pianists and organists to, to listen in a way that they never listened before, because there are other sounds that are happening in, in, the, uh, in the instrument 
Whereas with the piano, when you play it, it's like what you hear is what you just created when you strike the note. But there's there's afterlife and voices behind the stage on the platform. And the, all of the trills in Bach's music are placed in specific places because of the tuning. Um, and of course, trills sound so much better. And although I have shown you this modern action here, it's not to be a little this action because this instrument is capable of a very high velocity with touch. Would you like to, to demonstrate a little bit now? Sure. I'd like to say there's I'm trying to demonstrate all of the different kind of ideas that kind of come to you with with this music that Bach wrote all of his music but this and so on and so forth and ornamentation and everything is, there, there's so many more ideas that spring forth from the instrument. Uh, and, and as far as like how it can help a pianist or an organist or a harpsichordist is 
monumental because of the fact that the keys only go down about two millimeters instead of 10 millimeters on the piano. And um, the other thing is, is that nothing stops the, the uh, key from going down. On the piano, we have a felt underneath the front of the key that stops the key from going down to a precise part. So really, you're, you're almost like walking on bubbles, I would say, in, in a way, so that as, the, as you strike the key, the uh, impetus of the tangent hitting the string has a recoil that comes back to your finger because there's simply nothing that, to stop the key from going down. And that's really what you want because that allows for more expression. What they really did during the time of Bach was they tried to tune as many of the raised keys in low pitch. So a sharp is a very flat pitch, and a flat is a very sharp pitch. It's just completely turned around from how many people were thought. So with F sharp, G sharp, and C sharp, it allows you to play G flat, A flat, and D flat by squeezing the keys a little bit more. And the other thing is, for pianists, it, it's like finger yoga. There's never really, scales are just so wonderful because you feel you have your, your, your fingers in bread dough or something like that, that it's a, like, like you're a potter rather than somebody that's just playing a digital keyboard or, or something like that. Bach Around the Clock is made possible in part by Total Care Dental of Madison. More information at tcdmadison.com.